winner of the 2024 Texas Regional Radio Music Awards Internet Radio Station of the Year, Uvalde Radio. UvaldeRadio.net. Good evening. It's Robert Miguel checking in live from Broadway 830 for Friday Night Live. Great noise. We're, we're in the little cool little side room. We call this the uh, the Starlight Room. Uh, can, you know why? Because I guess there's starlights. Yeah, because the there's starlights behind us everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're joined by a special guest, Mr. Rich, Mr. Richie Mustillo, man. How you doing? Hey, great. How you doing, Robert? It's good to have you here, buddy. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, uh, when's the last time I saw you? Was it one of the awards, TCMAs? It was. Were you T- there? Good. I was at TCMA. I was at T3R oh, as well. Oh, T3R. So, that's right. That's yeah, right. So we did see each other briefly at very T3R. Very briefly. It yeah. was very briefly. Yeah. It was just at your round table. That did you we had. get to talk? On we the did air? get to talk. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because we did not get to talk to everybody. It was crazy, yes. man. It was nuts. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad we got in. That's yes, good. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad we were able to I, do it because you're with Cynthia's group. Yes, and with I, G2 I remember and I, there yes. was a couple of her guys we did not get to talk to, and I, I felt really yes. bad. So Cynthia, I love you. Mm-hmm. We'll make sure everybody gets covered next time. But uh, <laughs> but, but actually, in my defense, she was hard to nail down too. She was real busy. I'm she sure. was walking everywhere. Yeah. And at some points, uh, she was literally just send me a text message. Hey, can you meet me over here in the front by the door, or meet me at this sidebar or something so yeah. we can take a picture? And we were only t- able to take one picture with everybody, and everybody just dispersed. And I saw after that, that photo. It was great, man. You guys are such a family. I love uh, it. Was you awesome. guys are over at uh, G two eight nine. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you guys. It's always it's always cool seeing you guys do what you guys do. I, I feel yes, like sir. your group is really going places. Really yeah, thank representing you. kind of the southwest. You know, our part of the state. Oh, well, well definitely. Too. Yes. So. There, there's so many people who are all spread out from everywhere, all south, south, and southwest Texas as well. So, mm-hmm. Richie, you've been working with Cynthia over there, and, and I gotta mm-hmm. say this on a personal note. This is a little bit more personal than I sure. normally divulge here. But uh, my my daughter, my 17 year old, just graduated high school. Yes. Uh, it's been a big deal. It's been just taking up so much of my time personally. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to kind of get back and focus on life and, and more focus on the radio station. Absolutely. But uh, I just want to, we were talking about Cynthia. Mm-hmm. Cynthia was really kind enough to send my daughter a graduation gift. Aww. And, and it's, interestingly enough, we know a lot of people in this business. I, I'm pretty sure she's the only one in the biz that did that. And that's pretty remarkable. That I mean, is awesome. I don't expect anybody, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, they know me. And, you know, for my birthday, you better damn well send me something. No, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. But it was really, really, really thoughtful for her to send something, a nice gift to my to my daughter for her graduation. So, Cynthia, we love you. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I need your address. We're doing thank you cards next week. All right. That's so, so awesome. Uh, Richie, <laughs> in from San Antonio. First of all, how about that hot Texas weather, man? <laughs> Super hot. Ugh, can't, my lordy. can't get enough of it. I always need the fan. And, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a warm one tonight. It's all right. But we got we I got, got a cold fan. beers and we there is a, there's a big ass fan out there. We were talking about that yeah, last time. Yep, yep. Literally the brand is big ass fan. Yep. And uh some, some cold beers will take care of that in a good time. And that little area, a little breeze kinda sticks through there sometimes, it'll be nice. Yeah. Um when's the last time we had you here? Was it It was it was about a year ago now. So yes. so I, I remember it was in May. It was Cinco de Mayo weekend because we remember we uh, you put the sombrero on. Yes, it was actually exactly yeah. Cinco de Mayo. I yeah. think I played on the fifth. On Cinco de Mayo, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So it's mm-hmm. been about uh, thirteen yeah. months. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's weird that it took us that long to get you back, but uh, <laughs> but we I've seen you a couple times, like I said, yeah. at the uh, Texas Regional Radio Music Awards and maybe even. Another place, maybe the TCMA. TCMA. Or some point too. I, yeah. run it, I know we always end up running into each yeah. other. <laughs> always a pleasure, man. And everybody speaks so highly of you. Thank everybody you. Everybody loves. Thank everybody you. loves Richie. Thank you. Everybody loves Richie, <laughs> Mr. Richie B. You know, one thing I was going to mention to you. I, I driving over here because I know you you come in a little bit west of San Antonio, and uh-huh. I'm, I'm, I give you so much props for you know hauling your way all the way over there whenever those awards happen. because oh, yeah. <laughs> I know that's a far drive for you. You know, you know what the funny thing is, and I'm blessed because I come from the Dallas Fort Worth area. Oh, okay, I, I was yeah. born and raised here, mm-hmm. but some people still don't know this, but I did radio in Dallas for like 20 years <laughs> no, in rock awesome. radio. So yeah. if you ever up there and you listen to 97 one, the Eagle, the Rock Station, mm-hmm. that's where those are my old stomping grounds. So um, that's and, so cool. and, and this last. Last year, we actually won internet radio station yeah. uh, this in March, and it was kind of really cool to kind of come back to Dallas, where I started my career in radio, yeah. and you know, be awarded best internet station in a completely different genre. I'm doing country music now, so yeah. Yeah, well, we have a rock station as well too. Yes, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. From what so, you started at, yeah, yeah. So you know, <laughs> and um, you know, I got family and friends out there. My adult kids still live in Fort Worth, so. Wow. I actually am blessed to be able to go to those award ceremonies oh, yeah. and double it up as uh, 
as a family trip and, and visit family and friends. See, that, too, that, so. I think that's awesome that you get to do that. But it's still a haul, right? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> it's a long way. I tell you what, though. I mean, you're young, so that, that's about a six-hour drive. You know, on sure. average. Sure. Back in the day, when I was a kid, when I was 16, 17, getting my license for. It was like an eight-hour drive Ooh. because some of the, those highways did not exist. Those tollways did not oh, exist. Oh, yeah. yeah it was sense. 35 or nothing else. That's yeah. all you could do. And, That's true. Uh, so, woo. <laughs> and, and back then, you know, you remember the old Sammy Hagar, I can't drive 55? Mm-hmm. Highway speed was 55 miles per hour, man. Yeah. We're yeah. trucking at 70 easy now, right? So it's like, this is a whole different world. So I really, really can't complain. Uh, although my joints and my hips... <laughs> they're, a little, they're a little harder. On the, it's a little harder on the drive these days. But thank you, man, for coming yes. and making the trip down from San Antonio. Yeah, thank you. Um, I know you get around the region pretty well. Uh, tell me about some shows you've been doing lately, I, man. I try to. I try to. You know, um, I've been branching my way out to Corpus and uh, getting my way a little, a little bit more up in the hill country, uh, Kerrville. Uh, you know, I... I I was doing a lot of Burnett, Texas, and Marble Falls, and you know, I go out to um, you know Northeast Austin and West Northwest Austin, up by Travis Lake and stuff like that. Uh-huh. You know, uh, Leander uh, Jonestown. You know, I'm trying to make my way around. I and that's all I try to do is just branch my way further and further. I I, I love San Antonio and I, I do plenty of gigs there, mm-hmm. but you know, I want other places to be able to hear me too. Any places that you really kind of just found a really unique love for that you just love visiting? Yeah, the, you know there there has been a few. There's been a lot of a lot of it, it is mainly it's surprisingly a lot of the hill country, mm-hmm. and uh, they liked my style my style of music that I m- make music, but also all the stuff that has inspired me over the years. Uh-huh. What's kind of molded me into what I am today, and they're like, we love how diverse you are, and uh, you know. S- the certain songs that you may sing, they don't sound exactly like that song. It's mm-hmm. like your own version of it, and I, yeah. I, I appreciate that because you know acoustic, acoustic performance is supposed to be that way. I think yeah. so. Well, I mean, I mean, if somebody wants to hear a song by the artist, they can just put put a chord in the jukebox, right? You know what I mean? And you, it's good, it's good to, to put your spin on something, but of course, do it, give it its respect. You know, you don't want to, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I guess reinvent the wheel, but uh, but it's always nice when you can put your own little spin on something uh, yes, tastefully. Sir. So, yes, sir. and I think that you're right. You're right. Some of these, um, especially these hill country kind of um, venues, are a little bit smaller, a little bit more remote. Of and course. I feel like those, the fans in those places, they know a little bit more about certain stuff. They're a little bit more in the pocket as far as like um, they have more variety. They know a lot of stuff because a lot of times. They don't have, like, um, local radio stations that yeah. are going to give them that kind of generic regurgitated playlist. So they're they're doing the research. They're, they're into the artists. They're doing the Spotify. You know, they're, they're finding. They're hungry exactly. for the music. And uh, yes. they're more, that in, ends up being more familiar with a variety of different genres. But uh, that's cool, man. I'm glad to see mm-hmm. you. Yeah. You're making it around, doing Thank anything. Thank you. How is, um, since, since, since you've been here a year ago, how has your, uh, your set Evolve, change. Are you doing anything different now in your live shows than you were a year ago? You know, I was super focused on trying to build the repertoire of country music. And, you know, I've learned a lot more 90s country, a lot more 80s. And a lot of the songs, um, you know, it tends to be a lot of people request more singer-songwriter stuff. So mm-hmm. learning a lot more of that as well, It's it has evolved. And also going back to my roots, um, bringing back a lot of the oldies, you know, there's been some shows that people are like, hey, what about that stuff that you used to sing in the 50s and 60s, doo-wops and soul and stuff like that? And, um, Give me an example, because yeah. I don't think I've heard too much of that stuff. Like, like Yeah, uh, yeah, no, um, if you show lose me, oh yeah, you lose a good thing, stuff like that, yeah, nice. you know, like, like Motown. And, I'm going to make you sing a little yeah, bit later on, live yeah. on the air, okay? <laughs> Yeah, Woo. yeah. Stuff throat. like that, <laughs> stuff like that, you know. And doing oldies, bringing back that fifty stuff that what I started with when I was singing at nine years old. My uh-huh. grandpa was making me sing all of that. Um, I really started to hone in a little bit more of that, and um, I think that's also um, kind of projecting what's going to eventually become after this country album that I finish. You know, I might end up going back to those roots. Um, what I what I started singing with. Isn't that cool the way, like, a lot, a lot of us, and you're, you're younger than me, but like you, my first, I guess, exposure to music was old records that originally belonged to my grandmother, who gave them to my mother, and I was listening to oldies. I mean, like, it was li- literally 50s too. Now, you know, I- I'm more of an 80s kid, um, in the 80s, so, mm. but still, they were still considered oldies. 
in the 80s, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it's interesting how that, that's just kind of a cool thing that, and, and it really gives you, I think, a good foundation of like where it all began, you know. That's and, very true. Where, where, when you know about that, the origins of rock and roll, mm -hmm. uh, which eventually, you know, the mainstream country, all this stuff happened. I think it just gives you a great foundation for, you know, a knowledge base of that's music very true. in general. So, um, give, give us, while we're talking about it, what are some of the major influences that, that, fo that formed your sound, I guess? So that formed the sound? Um, you know, when it came down to it, like, when I started singing when I was a lot, you know, a lot younger, I've been doing this more than half my life, singing at least, and my grandpa and my uncle showed me uh, Frankie Lyman, showed me the Platters, yeah. the Cadillacs, all like the um, uh, Dion and the Belmonts, Hello, and Dion. Buddy Holly, and of course Richie Valens, and... Um, Alongside don't that, make me do my, don't let me yeah. do my Richie Valens thing. Because when you're here, yeah, yeah, everybody does it, <laughs> and I love it. I never get tired of it because I was no, one. You have to get tired was, of it. No, I really don't because that was literally one of my favorite movies growing up. And I seeing that, I saw man, I, it would be cool to do that. You know, when I was a lot younger, and uh -huh. you know, over time you have different plans in life, and uh, this was definitely one that was kind of in the back, in the back burner until I decide, hey, maybe I should at least try it. And say I tried it rather than not do it, you uh -huh. know, like to release my own music and try to push my my way through the um, the, the industry and see what happens. Because I'd rather say, hey, man, if I had to tell my kids and my grandkids, I used to do music and they're, oh, grandpa, really? You know, and uh -huh. I have some record to show, you know, that's awesome. I, I think that's what I, I would like to do, even if it doesn't go as far as I plan. Like the fact that I'm doing this, I, I this is what I've always had, like deep down in my soul. Like I've always you loved know, it. And, and, and I love the way you you're talking like 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 times are wasted, but you're young. You're still so young, man. And like you're, I have like, a long road to go. My life, you know. And I'm like, well, dude, you're a kid, brother. Um, <laughs> so you know, you've come a long way in a short time already. So uh, definitely excited to see where you go in the future. Thank you. Um, you got a new single. Let me go ahead and get, get into this because I kind of skimmed over it because we're just talking. Sure. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Richie Busio <laughs> here tonight, uh, Friday Night Live at Broadway 830. Live music on the patio, seven to ten p.m. Of course, no cover, just a free uh, show out of the patio. Come on. Four dollar pints till ten p.m. Some great. Great food. Oof. If you're local to the Uvalde area or Uvalde County, you got time to uh, stop by and see Richie. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you do, man. You got a couple of cool tunes on the radio. And let's go ahead and I guess um, talk about the, the new song because we got that. I got that already lined up here. Of course, uh, it's called Red Dirt, and it sounds great, man. Like, Thank I, you. I liked your last song um, a lot, but I feel like this one you're you're already kind of coming into something that sounds good. Tell me yes, all sir. about Red Dirt, how, how you got it, how you recorded it, all that stuff. <laughs> This song was one of the four songs that I recorded back in 2019, and, uh, you know, it was during COVID. We, we technically weren't even supposed to have been in the studio <laughs> recording it, and um, um, our buddy that was generous enough to be able to lend us his uh, studio had said, if we take pictures, you need to have your masks on because I could get my studio shut down in wow. a heartbeat, yeah. and I said, okay. But, you know, we're in there, you know, we when we would take pictures or video, we had our masks on, we would take our masks off. So it was a super weird time. You know, we cut it just outside of Nashville. And, but this was one of the four songs that we ended up recording that day. And, uh, you know, this song, early uh, 2018, um, into 2019, I guess late 2018 into 2019, you know, uh, my bass player, uh, we were just writing songs because that's all we were doing was just going to work. We both worked at Lowe's. We would go to work and go home, go to work and go home. So taking the risk, he would say, hey, come over to the house. This is when we're all supposed to be locked down and in quarantine. Right. Yeah. He goes, I'm more taking the risk. Let's just hang out, you know, have some beers and write music. And one night we were writing, writing, writing. And we got super, super upset at each other. What did I and he walked out. He comes back in. After like thirty minutes. Boy, what can I ask? What yeah. you got upset about? Just, just, just our songwriting stuff. Just songwriting because like, we were but, but, we always disagree. Like, but it's also pandemic, Thank man. You. Didn't it make everybody tense? Thank you. Right? Everybody we were was all tense. Stressed out during that pandemic. It was super you stressful. Masks. You can only hang out with a certain number of people. You're stuck with somebody. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you're glad to have somebody to bounce ideas off of. Of course. But I'm sure you got sick of them too, huh? We we we, <laughs> we got sick of each other. Yeah. But you know, we, we'll butt heads. But we always, you know, coming back to terms. But that was just one of the things. I was probably maybe a little too drunk that night and he was pissed <laughs> off and he comes back to drink, our shots just arrived so hey <laughs> gonna get to see about but anyway the only reason I, I interrupted and brought it up is because I think we forget sometimes it's all it's been like less than five years it has been it feels it like that a lifetime away 
and we forget that we were all living in like our own personal prisons, but, yeah, right? In, in our, Crazy. in our, and yeah, it was a self prison for everyone. And I think, um, uh, you know, it affected everybody's mental health, unfortunately, too. So, you know, coinciding with that, yeah, we were bumping heads. Yeah. We were, we were real bad. But, you know, he came back about 30, 45 minutes later, <laughs> kind of forgiving me. He has a sheet of paper with lyrics on it. And he goes, I had an idea. I said, okay. He goes, you think we can make a song out of this? I said, I look at it and I'm like, well, yeah, it's half a song, but uh, yeah, we, we can bounce off of this. Yeah. Well, we wrote the majority of it that night, but the next day we already had the melody, the structure of the song was done. That's awesome. So it took us about two days to do it, but we were super excited because we're like, oh, you know, this is like one of the first songs that we've helped each other do. Um, and we were super proud of it and we loved it. You know, so we had a full on performance we took it to um to the rough cut to Nashville and they just did their own thing with it and they asked same thing asked for what Richie what were your influences growing up and this and this and that and ultimately it came down to a, a super cool like when i heard it it reminded me a lot of like the way the eagles has a song songs that really push mm-hmm. and i thought that was cool it had that like california sound to it and but the way whenever I hear it, it's definitely one of those songs that you, summer song. You're driving yeah. out on the open road, no, and it sounds like a road trip song. Like just yeah, yeah. windows down, you know, sun out. Yeah, definitely for sure. Love so uh, Rudy Lopez, my bass player, was the ro- the one that pretty much came up with the idea, and we, you know, I just kind of helped him here and there. But yeah. he's the one that wrote the song and ultimately lets me sing it every day. So, <laughs> well, I love hearing that. You know, a great song like this. Born out of the pandemic, and like we talked about, we were all stressed out, and uh, I'm sure that was um, a little bit of therapy for you too. You know, having really was. something something good come out of that era. You know, so absolutely, um, and it was kind of refreshing and uh, relieving in a way as well because we're like, oh, you know, all of this hard work because we really had been, you yeah. know, uh, busting our butts at work, but then we come and r- relax and and get to do our thing at the end of the day. You know, it was it was worth. Unfortunately, the pandemic, it, it really kind of... Maybe lit even a, get a little drunk while you're little, at it. A little, little <laughs> fire under our butts, you know? Well, this is a song. It's a Red Dirt. This is Richie Bustillo. If you like what you hear, and I know you will, come see him live tonight, 7 p.m. on the Broadway 830 Outdoor Courtyard. That's 100 East Main Street, right here in beautiful downtown Uvalde. And this is Friday Night Live on UvaldeRadio.net. Shine 
Friday Night Live. We are comfy inside of Broadway, 830 100 East Main Street, downtown Uvalde. The big show is later on the patio, 7 p.m. with our friend Richie Bustillo out of San Antonio. Richie! Richie! Not my Richie! I had to do my Kanye impersonation again. Yeah, I do. Um, but uh, we're glad you're here, man. Thank you for having and me. And we're glad you didn't fly. I know, yeah. It's, a, it's <laughs> just a hop skip down the road. Guitar. <laughs> Or whatever she says. Uh, that's yeah. the new song called Red Dirt. Uh, climbing up the Texas charts. Um, and uh, great song, man. Thank great you recording. so much. And I'm glad so, you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I really dig it. I, it sounds so great. I love it whenever, you know, we, we get a song from a promoter or an artist and, you know, we put it on. And when, I, when I'm just, when I'm listening, because, you know, when I'm in the office, I'm listening as the boss. But sometimes I'm listening to my stations as the customer. Like, I'm just out mowing the lawn or having a beer in the front sure. yard doing, you know, doing what sure. we do. And I'm like, oh, that's a cool song. When I'm like in, in IRL, in real life, listening, and your song comes out, I'm like, oh, that sounds so good. So I'm proud of you, man. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm more proud of your song. <laughs> Thank <Good> you. Good job. <laughs> but um, now I now want to know a little bit more about um, the other tracks you have in the can. You got yeah. a couple more still, right? Yes, I do have a couple so more. So are those going to be re- radio releases? Um, are, are they available at streaming already? Give us the details. What's Not going on yet. Here? It's, um, it, you know, I... I've been working on the full album, you know, Mm -hmm. currently right now I have about 12 tracks that are, you know, I want to do a full 14, 15 song album. Um, That is old school. Yeah. Nobody does that anymore, especially young people like you. So, you know, I, I've had these four songs pretty much done and Red Dirt's been done since like early 2020, but, um, I wasn't ready to just throw everything out in one album or EP mm-hmm. and let it just sit there. Right. And then now I'm like, okay, well, you know, at the time, and still people, I'm still trying to get my name out there. But, you know, some people know of me. I've at least heard my name. So in the beginning, I just wanted to put something out. Hey, right. let's just do it. I didn't want to just say, oh, I got a full album out, and that's all I have right now. Right. So my... No, it makes sense, because yeah. you're still trying to grow your fan base, get out there, do more shows like we talked about earlier. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, you don't want to blow your wad, you know, too soon, right? You want to make sure that you have some stuff in the can yes, uh, and make sure that people are hungry for that stuff. So, yeah, um, giving people a, a little bit of a, a teaser, a taste, yes. you know, um, a little bit of that time is is smart in, in yes. your position right now. So yes, that's sir. excellent, man. Um, so is there a timeline on releasing new music or a full album? Yeah. What, are you, what are you looking for? No, um, as soon as like the summer's over, I actually have two other songs that I'm going to be going to sing on Monday to wow. finish them up. They're, the songs are already done. I just got to go redo some vocal tracks. Uh-huh. Um, but those are going to be some two other songs that are going to be pushed out later on the, in the end of the year. Uh, once it kind of gets about halfway through an album, I am going to release the EP like with a new song. Song, nice. You know, just mm-hmm. so there's more content getting flowed out. But, you know, by early next year, I should have an album out. And um, it's just locking in a couple of these extra songs that I've been writing and finishing them up, getting in the studio, finishing those. Uh-huh. Uh, that's that's all. That's pretty much it, you know. But, yeah, so I would say, like, uh, you know, first, latest, second quarter of next year. Excellent, man. That's good. Yeah. And that'll be, that, it'll fly by, man. Just and like it really this last is. year did for us, right? <laughs> So you, we mentioned your, your bass player a little bit earlier when we yes. talked about the writing of Red Dirt. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about the rest of the band, uh, the guys that normally gig with you, and what they contribute to what you know the Richie yeah. Bustillo experience. When when I first started taking the band thing seriously, and I did have some people that were help were great help, and um, you know I had this one band that I started off with country music that I, I never really played country I only knew of country music because of my uncle my uncle showed me at least the good the good stuff in my opinion George Strait George Jones Alan Jackson um, Travis Tritt uh, 90s stuff yeah. late 80s early 90s stuff and that's all I really knew so I was telling the guys they're thinking they're asking me what can you play and um, I just give them those artists and I said I know a lot of from these guys but they were the ones that kind of started telling me this would probably fit for you this would be a good choice you can try this try this and it was a band um, that I played with called River City Kings out of San Antonio 
so they kind of really helped and influenced me and I have another buddy his name is Mick Hernandez he helped me um, really try to hone in hey Richie you probably sing this good showing me some more tasteful newer music as well Uh you know so um they were huge influences, such as, uh, you know, Rudy as well, showing me, Richie, try this song. Richie, try this song. Now, are these guys mm-hmm. around your age group? Are they a little bit older than you guys? Uh, than you are, everybody's older than me. Okay. Um, you know, kind of just going down the timeline. Started off with River City Kings, then I met Rudy at work, and we started our own band. And, um, you know, th- th- I'm, j- I'm kind of just starting because it. I've been in quite a few bands over the years, you know, but starting with the country stuff, it was mainly that. Nowadays, I have, you know, somebody that's been a great help and influential to me as well is my steel guitar player. When I do hire my steel mm-hmm. guitar player, his mm-hmm. name is Randy Gilliam, and um, you know he's fantastic and great mentor. And I those have, guys are like gold. Not only do they fantastic. make the band sound amazing, but they're always kind of like the older, wiser, been in the scene forever. Yes, and they know the ins and outs and give you good advice. I'm sure you've gotten great. I mean, something about steel players, man, right? Yeah, they just know everything about the industry. <laughs> Like he knows. Stories. He's been he's been playing steel guitar since he was uh, I believe eight years old. Wow. Yeah, and he, crazy. yeah, he's already in his seventies. Um, he's they, fantastic. They should be asked, uh, an eight year old should even have access to a steel guitar, in my opinion. But wow. Yeah. Good on his parents, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's he, excellent. He, but he's been doing it for years. He's one of those, and you know, um, another buddy of mine, Leo Thibodeau, plays guitar, and uh, you know, they supplement. They were supplementing the band when I was using them super, super often, and. Um, you know, I've had some other friends help nowadays. Um, uh, my buddy John Butler, who was originally like a rock drummer, and uh-huh. he came in. Richie, I want to learn country. Can you help me learn more stuff? <laughs> Showing him a lot of my my music, and he really enjoys it. And you know, so John Butler's helped me. Um, my one of my buddies now within the last you know four years, I've known him. Um, he's a metal guitarist, but mm-hmm. same thing. Richie, I want to learn country music. Showing him a lot of the greats um, of country picking, and he goes. I've never thought in my life that I'd be playing country music and it was going to be so much harder. Right, yeah, it's true. Because he's a shredder. Yeah. He, he's awesome. But he's been... The shredding he, is crunchy, man. It's just you just go. You know what I mean? And, and he's been... And distortion does it all for you. He's been, <laughs> he's, been, he's been learning a lot. And I've been very proud of him, you know, taking that step out of his comfort zone. And his name is Fernando Moreno. Um, you know, everybody's from the San Antonio area except uh-huh. uh, um, John Butler from... Uh, he's from Pipe Creek. Uh, you know, so, I, I, yeah. I, I get a kick yeah. out because I'm the same way. I get a kick out of seeing these old rock guys who back when we were young was like, country sucks. But, man, you give us 20 years later... It's like, oh, you know what? Country's a lot cooler than maybe we admitted back when we were young and angry. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can settle into that real nice. We, we love our country music. Well, oh, yeah. all, all, us old metalheads. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah, it's fun. You know, uh, last couple of guys that I would like to just give a shout-out to would mainly be, um, you know, some a lot of guys that helped me out. Um, Robert Cruz from Texas Double Shot. He helps me out with gigs when I need them, and uh-huh. um, so does Avery Castro from Kinfo. You know, we, we've been friends for the last few years, but whenever he's on, had some off time, you'll let me know. Richie, I'm a baby. Too much these days, right? Yeah, and I said, you know what? I might have a gig for you. He helps me out a lot too. So Avery, Avery's a good, you know, good buddy. Well, and man, so it, I appreciate everybody that helps me, and they it, really do. It sounds like you've got a good group of of people to that help you out, influence you, and collaborate. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know what you're doing and what, what the Richie Bustillo sound is. Yes, sir. But I, I like the fact that you seem malleable and open to other people's input. That, that's a good way to be Abs- in this industry or any industry, really. So. Absolutely. Um, you, I, I guess that's one major point that I like to make is that, you know, I I, used, I come from a rock background, too. Mm. I, you know, before the country music, I was playing rock. I was playing Black Sabbath. Um, I was playing it. Aerosmith and Zeppelin and, you know, even going more into the early 90s rock, you know, mm-hmm. I was doing the Audio Slave and Green Day, Blink-182, uh, playing that stuff. I kn- now that you I it know. Up, I expect some of that tonight on the patio. <laughs> just at least so, so, throw, me, throw, me, throw me a bone. <laughs> I will, I will. I will be playing some other stuff. Awesome. You know, when, when it comes down to that, I... You know, I know that a lot of these guys that play rock have some sort of chops. You know, you may not sound country, right. but... I don't mind having a little bit of that sound to influence sure. my, you know, whatever happens in the band. And we could still sound country, you know, it may sound a little different, but I think that's also what makes me sound different. It's not yeah. just going to be a regular country band. Yeah, we play country music, but we're going to play it our own way, you know? Very cool, man. Again, we have Richie Bustillo here. He's in from San Antonio, performing tonight on the patio, 7 o'clock, 7 to 10 p.m., and uh, we're going to have some pizza out there. 
$4 pints from 6 to 10, which is back now, till 10 p.m., and uh, some great drink specials. And Richie, back in Uvalde for the first time in over a year. So we're excited to have you here. And thank thanks you to Cynthia for uh, helping facilitate this as well. Thank you, Cynthia. So, um, okay, so we're going to play your new, uh, your, your first single to radio, Two Hearts, One Moon. We're going to okay. come back and we're going to do a shot, all right? We're going we're gonna to tease everybody on that. Sounds good. As, as I get jazzed up for it, because I'm not really a shot guy. But, but I, at, the, at the top of this uh, Friday Night Live season, I decided on every Friday Night Live live interview we do, we're going to do a shot with our guest. And you pick the shot, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay. But right now, it's Richie Mustillo, Two Hearts, <laughs> One Moon, Friday Night Live on UvaldeRadio.net. I'm in Denver. You're in San Antonio. I knew you'd remember to be waiting by the phone, but this time instead of talking, let's try a new point of view. When you look out the window, is the moon shining on you? Yes, I miss you I've been gone too long And just to kiss you I could crawl through this phone But we know that can happen So the moon will just have to do Looking out this window, the moon takes me to you. I can see you standing there. Tell me what you're going to wear. So I can see you in my mind.
is UvaldeRadio.net. We are live at Broadway, 830, 100 East Main Street, downtown Uvalde, getting ready for another Friday Night Live showcase. we got our friend Richie Bustia went from San Antonio. One more time, Richie! Hey. Glad to have you here, man. Thank you so glad, much for being here. Very um, glad to be here. Just played your first single, Two Hearts, One Moon. I, I know that was a song that was kind of gifted to you. Give us a quick story on Two Hearts, One Moon. You know, um, uh, it's it's an awesome story, and I'm, it's 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 actually a great like privilege to be able to sing this song, and this is another song you know I get to sing every night when I showcase my music that I've I've been a part of or I've written you know but this was a song that my buddy Vic Quinton had written back in 1991 with his buddy uh, Dale McBride and Dale McBride is Terry McBride's dad wow from McBride and the Right yeah yeah so Dale and Vic this was actually Dale's last song that he wrote before he passed away in 1992 so he, he held on to it for a long time. Um, he ended up getting a couple of guys to try to cut it. And he just, like, just wasn't satisfied with it. And, you know, I, become, I became friends with Vic about five years ago. And he, you know, offered the song, Would You Like to Sing It? I said, you know what? I would love to, you know. Uh, hopefully I could try to keep the, the um, McBride name and... Yeah. and you know, but that's one way I, I would love to contribute to try to, and I'll try my absolute best to sing the song. So, you know, he let me record it and he loved it. And I, you know, I'm super gracious for, for Vic. Vic yeah. Quinton let me sing the song every night. Well, I mean, I mean it, it's definitely got that classic country vibe to it. And I'm, I'm sure it, uh, it fits right in with that whole McBride legacy of music. And, and you know, just since we're bringing him up. McBride, the Rye, they're back, man. They, they got that new record, and they're sounding good. They're, they're great doing, as ever, man. They're, so. they're doing great. Yeah. You know, all the stuff that, that Terry's done in the past, and I was like, uh, her, her, you know, coming back and visit, revisiting his music, completely forgetting yeah. that I've heard that stuff, yeah. like, years ago, oh, you know? So good. Wasn't too much into country, and but that was definitely a few songs that I... Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, for sure. Like, one of my favorites is Felicia, you know? Felicia! And I'm like, ooh, that's such a... You know, there's so many good hits that it's he's It's just kind of cool that you're kind of, like, intertwined in that, like... Legacy, kind of a uh, whether it's a uh, six degrees of separation, like you're still in, in that story. It's really cool. <laughs> again, Richie Mustillo is here, and uh, that song was called uh, again uh, Two Hearts, One Moon. Be sure and find that online, get on his website, etc. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do our shot real quick, and we're gonna get a live performance, right? Let's do it, yes, All right, sir. So, so, Richie, tell us what we're drinking here. Uh, again, I let my guest pick the shot, and what, what are we doing here today? Oh, this is just gonna be Jameson whiskey. Uh, he was mentioning that he likes to drink whiskey. I like whiskey. And I've had Jameson, like, I'm more of a cocktail kind With of guy. With the cocktail, yeah. So this will be my first time to actually have a shot mm-hmm. of Jameson. Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to get a little photo of you while okay. we're doing this. Sounds Let's good. Let's do a little toast here, a little cheers. <laughs> all right. And that's my photo. <laughs> and, all right, I'm going to yeah, do a smell. Got to gotta fill up the sinuses. I, I'm, with a little, it. I'm a little uh, stuffy anyway. It's all good. So maybe it'll help me out. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do a little, uh, little yeah. coat, coat back. There's nothing wrong with it. All right, ready? What, what are we? What are we? Hey, let's do this to Cynthia. Yeah, to Cynthia. Cynthia, we love you, man. Cheers, we love you, Cynthia. Cynthia. All right, <laughs> all right. G two eight nine. Here we go. Cheers. Oh, that was easy peasy. Wow. Very smooth. Wow. Now that you, is so good. Now you know why people do it with with uh, cocktails like a mix. My lordy goodness, I don't even need it. Wow. Yeah, you really don't need the that chaser. That was amazing. It's super smooth. All right, all right, Jameson. Hmm. They're gonna be uh, they're gonna be competing with some other favorites of mine now. Hmm. No, seriously. Yeah. And oh. the, the orange one is very good as I'm well. Check that out. All right. So so I, you, you said you're a little bit of a connoisseur. You you, you tried. You, um, <laughs> give me some. Give me the recipe. We'll see. And you're young, so you you got the. You still got the heart, the taste buds for it. <laughs> so, uh, well, what are some of your favorite spirits and drinks? You know, um, I used to have this one, and it was so weird. They don't sell it anymore, but it was a tequila, uh-huh. and it was called Black Craft, and it had a skeleton on it. Ooh, that sounds cool. But it was a uh, ghost pepper. Uh, oh, you know, excuse me. It was. It, I, I say it was a tequila because it was clear, but it's a whiskey. Oh, okay. It goes wow. pepper whiskey. Ooh. And I used to put that in with lemonade. Oh. So you would get like a spicy lemonade. Yeah, yeah. That was my favorite. I wish everybody could try it, but it's, it's they don't make it Off anymore. The market. But um, Why don't you even bring it up? <laughs> going, going to uh, Old Smoky makes a really good mango habanero. Okay. Um, like a whiskey kind of a liqueur, you wow. know? Wow. 
Um, that one's good. They're the ones that's that do good the with shine, lemonade. Right? Yeah, they're the ones okay, that okay. do the, the okay. moonshine. Yeah. So they have that whiskey that's good with lemonade. Um, nice, I right? like that. Or even half a lemonade, half tea. Have a little bit of mango Ooh. habanero in there. All right. Um, you know, when it comes to the 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 whisk, like whiskeys, I love Jameson. Jameson's probably my favorite. Uh, tequilas, gosh, uh, I like the Casamigos. Uh, Casamigos is a you know a little bit more on the higher end. Uh, uh, La Pulga is a good one too. La yeah. Pulga. La Pulga. Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a good one too. That means flea, right? <laughs> Interesting. It okay. <laughs> I met them a couple the uh, last year, as a matter of fact, and but they were fairly new, and I told them like, man, that's a very good tequila. Um, that's a good one. Uh, you know, there, there's there's some that are made out of uh, what is it? It's the cousin of the agave. Huh? I just can't get it off the top of, off the top of my head. I can't remember the name of it, but that one's a good one too. Because you know, when it comes down to the agave plant, it can only be grown grown in Jalisco around you uh, know the state of Jalisco. Oh, it's the Huajilo or whatever. Yeah, uh, what's it called? So, there's only certain places in Mexico that can grow and right, make right. the you know breed the breed the tequila like you know the agave for the plant. So they find these other cousins of the tequila. You know, to make it, so it's not specifically tequila. You've done some research. Yeah. You know your stuff. That's I, awesome. Unfortunately, I do. But <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I'm willing. I'm willing to try different kind of spirits and, and beers. And you know, I um, I've learned what the which ones I favorable that have a good taste. And some of them, you know, not all of them have good taste. But there's some pretty good ones out there. Well, I'm definitely <laughs> on board with Jameson now. All right. So again, Richie will see us here, and uh, he performs tonight seven o'clock, which means we don't have a lot of time. Got a little bit late here tonight on this Sorry. interview, but it's been a pleasure, man. So thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for making the trip out to you. Val. Thank you. Uh, Rich, are you going to do a little live thing for us? Tell me, what are you, you going to perform for us? Um, let's do, I'm going to do this song. I wrote it about four years ago. Okay. Actually, this was like maybe the, the year before COVID, right? Uh, gosh, flu. Probably 2018, I probably wrote this one. This was actually, actually a song um, that was a poem. It was a poem before I even thought about making it a song. Wow. Uh, yeah, I was sitting on the bathroom floor, probably crying, but uh, it, it was some feelings that I needed to write to a uh-huh. girl, and I didn't know how to tell her. Nice. So that's uh, this is what the song is. All right, y'all, check it out. This is Richie Bustillo live on Friday Night Live at Broadway Thrill on UvaldiRadio.net. Eyes with you at midnight, not hearing a single word you said. The blood rushing to my brain, I thought it'd be the end. Your lips were like an angel, speaking tongues I cannot comprehend. Please decide for things for my twisted mind, I cannot understand. Well, this reading game won't be easy. You can put your faith in me If you call me up on the telephone One quick ring and I'll take off No matter how I get there, it's where I'll be We can make this last forever Just you and I together This love will have to be a mystery So now before you Just think twice before you set me free Cause you know what you're doing to me I watch dancing beams of moonlight Reflect upon your skin Couldn't tell if this was just a dream Or was it too much gin I can't lie this way I'm feeling I'm ready to break this heart again When you hold me tightly, darling Is it too hard to understand? Oh, tonight, don't forget this moment It will be our history If you call me up on the telephone One quick read and I'll take off No matter how I get there, it's where I'll be Last forever, just you and I together. This love won't have to be a mystery. So now. 
down before you leave Just think twice before you set me free Cause you know what you're doing to me We can make this last forever Just you and I together So now before you leave, just think twice before you send me free, cause you know what you're doing before you leave, send me free, so now before you leave. <laughs> there you go, alright. This is Friday Night Live, and that was Richie Bustillo live inside the Broadway oh, yeah. theater. Everybody, I mean, there are some people who are like looking at you like, wow, yeah, that boy like, can sing. They're like, why is he singing in yeah, here? Yeah, I know, it's cool. <laughs> and they're like, well, I mean, the guy next to him is cute, but I don't know if he's <laughs> worth a serenade. <laughs> but, uh, man, thank you. That was a great performance, dude. Thank you so much. That is just, just a sample of what you're going to hear tonight, yeah. starting in just a few minutes, 10 minutes from now. Yeah. 7 to 10 p.m., Richie Bustillo live on the patio here at Broadway 830. Richie, it's been really cool catching up with you, man. Thank you so much for having me, Robert. Give Appreciate us the website, it. all the socials, all the ways to get your music, all that good all stuff. All that fun stuff. You can look me up under Richie Bustillo Music. Um, I have a website, too, RichieB-Music.com. Um, doesn't have too much on there because I'm actually trying to get another another URL. But, okay. um, but yeah, Richie Bustillo Music on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, that's what I have on my handle. My handle is actually the Richie B Official. So I have, um, you know, two main ones. It's Richie Bustillo Music and the Richie B Official. I spell my name R-I-C-H-I-E. It's Richie without a T. No T. <laughs> no T, yeah. All right, all right. Very yeah. good, man. Um, how about uh, tonight's show? You got any merch available? Any CDs, anything like that? Or? Not yet. I'm working on yeah. I am working on it. It's, you know, I'm trying to get some stuff related to the singles that have been coming sure, out so yeah. far. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to find a good, uh, if you got any recommendations, anybody, let me know uh, about some making some T-shirts You know what? Hats. Kinfo just made a Facebook post today about their merch guy. Yep. So I yep. guess they won Best Merch at the uh, TC MC. Industry Summit yeah. Awards, so oh, talk, super talk cool. to your buddies and Kimbo. I am definitely going to have to then. Yeah, yeah, that's good. all I got to do. I just got to find a good one, you know? Yeah, very good. Oh, cool. oh, I look forward to that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> be sure and get your hands on that Richie Bustillo branded merch when that happens. So, oh, yeah. uh, man, again, like it's been really great catching up with you, man. Thank you so much for having so, me. I uh, look forward to the show tonight here at Broadway 830. And uh, just real quick, last question. Any cool gigs come up in the future you want to talk about that we might want to make plans for? Um, You know, I, I have plenty. If you... If you were interested in checking out, you know, I kind of make my way around. But if I'm in your neck of the woods, um, you can find it all on my Facebook, Instagram. I post my schedule for the month and for the week. You know, as the days come by, I'll post the day of, hey, come check me out here. But I usually put um, a flyer for every event that I do. And I have the address and the time that I'll be playing. Um, but, you know, this upcoming week for this weekend, I'll be, I'll be playing in Kerrville, Texas at Gravity Check Saloon on Saturday at 7 p.m. And on Sunday, I'll be in Holotus, Texas for the Southern Smoke and Sip Festival. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, um, at 2.15 p.m. on Stage 1. Now, are they smoking so, meats or smoking something else? Um, I believe they're smoking meats, and we'll keep it that way. <laughs> All right, man. Well, cool. Yeah, and you'll find the rest of the gigs on the website. We'll give me that one more time. Yeah, um, um, so it's mainly going to be Richie Bustillo Music, like I said, yeah. Facebook, um, on my main Facebook page that I'm actually live streaming right now, and um, on my Instagram, so that's where I Hello, keep keep, keep up to date <laughs> with me that way, that's pretty, the, the most recent stuff that I, um, I, I'm i pretty consistent on, so people can yeah. see where I'm playing, that'll be it. Well man, again, like it's been, it's been great catching up with you, man, thank I you love so much. watching you, your career, and I'm just, and thank you. it's just been really full, cool watching you grow, so thank you, Robert. look forward to the next time around, man. Yes, sir. Richie, tonight, live here in U Valley. So come on, because we don't know. It might be another year so we get you back again, all right? That is going to wrap it up for Friday Night Live. I'm Robert Miguel, getting back into regular programming on uvaldiradio.net.